Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome, welcome to PTPOG, Practicing the Presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you on this nice Monday morning. It is Monday, the 17th of May, and uh, I'm so glad to be back with you this lovely bright morning. God is good and uh, he is richly blessing us. He always does. I want to say a word of thanks to you for kind of hanging in with us. I know it's been difficult. I haven't been on for the last four or five days. That is kind of crazy uh, because uh, I had gotten sick uh, on Friday and uh, I just just getting over this, whatever it was, uh, really, really crazy. I had a little stomach virus or whatever. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> we are so glad to be back with you. Happy Monday to you. Thank you for hanging in with me and for understanding. Uh, and so we're just blessed. I'm so blessed to be back with you today. Uh, I feel almost weird doing this because I haven't done it in the last four days. So I uh, got to get back kind of in the swing, uh, as it were, and get back uh, in the seat, kind of get comfortable, you know, where I was and where we've been. Uh, but God is good. God is good. So listen, I'm not going to take a lot of your time today because today I have a funeral this morning, uh, and I really am soliciting your prayers this morning because... Uh, this funeral is is uh, is very much unexpected. Uh, I'm funeralizing a, a, a four year old little boy today, and uh, a precious little boy. Uh, I, I'm just praying for the family, and I know you are too. But please pray for us today as we uh, seek to minister to the family in this way. Uh, you know, my heart goes out to this family and to the friends and loved ones who are connected to this young man, uh, this little boy, uh, four years old. It's, it's really unbelievable, uh, you know, but uh, we still serve a, a, a mighty God. And uh, we're going to try to share uh, God's love today uh, <clears throat> at this uh at this uh, ministry of funeralization this morning. So please keep us in your prayers. Uh, keep this family in your prayers. Uh, they, they really, really, really need it, okay? But with that, we're gonna go right into our word again for this morning. And we're not gonna take long today, as I said, uh, because we really need to take care of our business. We got so much going on today, so much, you know. It seems like whenever, whenever I take a break and when I come back, it's like so much going on. But anyway, uh, we are looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 2. 2 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 4, <coughs> excuse me, and we are reading verse number 2. The Bible says, but, and this is from the English Standard Version, by the way, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways, and we refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. 
today we're speaking uh, just briefly from the subject of this morning, uh, our approach to ministry, our approach to ministry. Let's bow our heads. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your blessings and your graciousness towards us. You've been so kind and you uh, comfort us, Lord, where we need to be comforted. You uphold us where we need uh, your foundation and your your grace. So Lord, be with us this morning. Please help us to build upon your grace and your love towards us. Uh, Be with the family, uh, Lord, this morning as uh, we seek to minister to them with the loss of their uh, little boy. Uh, Please, God, may your Holy Spirit lead and guide us and provide for these people, uh, these uh, family, these young people, what only you can provide. And Lord, please give us this day, our daily bread in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So today we're talking about our approach to ministry. Um, And I'm going to get right into it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I'm just going to get right into it. So you know, what is our approach to ministry? What should be our approach to ministry? When we seek to minister to people, specifically talking about the word of God, when we seek to talk and deliver the word of God to people, when we seek to share the word of God to people, uh, when we seek to minister to people uh, where we are, what what is our approach to ministry? And this is very uh, significant in terms of what Paul is talking about here, because Paul brings up the fact in this uh, statement here, in just one verse, here in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 2, he says, first of all, there's some things that we don't do. There are some approaches that we don't come after, we don't follow after. There there are some angles that we don't come at people from uh, when we're dealing with the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, we've renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God in a deceitful manner, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. There's three things he says we don't do. We don't, we, we, we have renounced the hidden things of shame. They all come up under the banner of shameful practices in ministry. The first is we don't walk in craftiness. We don't seek to minister the word of God in a crafty human-like fashion. Like we're not trying to trick people and fool people and and and, and force people and, and, and get people to feel a certain kind of way so they can get into the baptismal pool. We're not trying to uh, uh, force people into the pool so we can get the baptismal numbers up. We're not, we're not trying to make people feel this way or that way. We're, that that's not that's not our. We're not trying to be crafty. We're not trying to be overly smart and trying to overdo it. We're not trying to approach people with these psychological brain tactics where we, you know, manipulate people and and cause people to do things that they don't even realize they're doing until after they've made the commitment (laughs) that we're not doing that. We don't do that kind of thing with the word of God because the word of God is such that we have to bring the approach of our ministry in alignment with God's truth, in alignment with God's word. And the reason why this is so important is because there are so many other genres of life where people use this kind of approach, this craftiness, crafty approach. Like for example, advertisement, when they're trying to sell you something, what do they do? They sell you something based upon your emotional response or emotional connection that they're trying to make with you. Uh, It's so focused, it's not, it has nothing to do with truth. It has nothing to do with the reality of what they're selling, but it has more to do with trying to create this need in your head or in your mind. I I studied this book on advertising years ago. And the first thing, the first thing that you have to do as an advertiser is you have to create in the mind of the people that you're selling to this idea of a need. You have to create the need. You don't 
bring up a need that that's already there. You cre you create a need. You create this need in people's minds, and that need eventually you have created. You're going to connect to the product, whatever it is that you're selling. Now you may connect it with a need that they already have, but nonetheless, you have advertisement is the creation of need. That was that's basically what the some summarization of the book said. Advertising is the creation of need in people's minds, in people's hearts. Well, we don't do that in ministry. We're, we're not creating needs. We're not creating some idea in your mind that you have to have Jesus or, you know, you're going to die or you're not going to make it or you're not going to be successful or you're not going to, you know, uh, 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 you, you're not going to get the money that you're looking for. You're, that's not the approach that we bring to the gospel. We don't come with craftiness. We don't come with trickery. We don't come with smoke and mirrors. We're not creating a magic show. Uh, you know, when I, I remember when I was first coming through, uh, you know, up in ministry when I was younger and uh, the different approaches that so many ministers and pastors and preachers had, especially those who were evangelists, you know, just, uh, you know, they were creating these shows up on stage. And, and I can't get deep into it, but suffice it to say that uh, they were using all kinds of different antics, uh, dramas, you know, and, 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 and there's nothing wrong with drama. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that these are not the things that you rely upon to minister to people. You want to approach people with things that you don't have to hide or you don't have to cover up your real intention. Hello, somebody. And so Paul says here, we do not, re we renounce the hidden things of shame. We don't walk in craftiness where we're trying to trick or fool somebody, nor do we handle the word deceitfully. We don't handle the word deceitfully. In other words, we don't tell people something that isn't really in the word, or we do not create something in the word that isn't there. Neither do we hide something from people that actually is in the word. So we don't deceive people about what is really going on about what God really desires for us and what God honestly is trying to do in and through us. We don't hide it. We don't, you know, we're not trying to mask it. We're not trying to make it a euphemistic, you know, thing where, oh, we're, we just want you to get to swallow it. No, we're, we're telling you straight out, this is what's up. This is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Guess what? We're all sinners. We're all lost. Did you know that? I know you know you're lost because you wouldn't be here if you didn't have some inkling or some idea that you have a need for something more than just money or power or social connection. You, you've got something more of a need in your heart, in your mind, and it's, I want you to know it's a God chasm in your heart. You, you need the Lord in your life. You, you need salvation. You need to understand, hallelujah, mm, mm, mm that God has saved you and that God has given you a new lease on life. God takes your guilt and your shame and your desperation and he, re he, 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 he replaces it with his love and his kindness and his acceptance and his grace. Somebody say amen. And these are things, even though they appear to be hidden, these are spiritual things that you can't see with the naked eye but they are fundamental to the nature of who we are as human beings. You need, an, a, a, you need a conscience that doesn't have guilt and shame all over it. Come on, say amen. And see, when you're younger, you don't really understand that because you know, you're always doing something wrong when you're young. You're always doing something stupid when you're wrong, something silly, something broken. But, but when you get older, that stuff accumulates in your mind and heart, all that stuff you did, you used to do. And, the guilt and the shame begins to wear on you. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. See, this, this is the approach that you have to have. You got to come at people with reality, straight up. Stop pretending and, and making nice little 
cute little sayings and all this. No, no, come at it straight out with the word of God. This is the approach we have. We're not trying to be cute. We're not trying to be pretty. We're not trying to sell you something. We're not trying to tell you if you give us a certain amount of money, God's going to give you. We're not trying to quit pro quo up in here like men and human beings do on this. No, 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 no. We're telling you the straight up, straight up what God is offering you. Someone in here understands what I'm talking about. We're trying to give you the gospel of grace. We're not trying to sell you on something. We're not trying to tell you if you buy me a brand new jet, uh, God's going to bless you. Somebody in here knows what I'm talking about. If, if you buy me a new house and a, a couple of new cars, God, God's going to richly bless you. You know, this kind of foolishness that these preachers are doing out here, it really upsets me so bad. That is not the approach of ministry. Paul says, no, that is not how you approach ministry. You're not here to suck people dry of their finances so you can live high on the hog while they sit over there living in squalor and you're sitting over there pretending to give them promises that aren't even in the word of God. You got to approach ministry with truthfulness with transparency, letting people know, listen, I've been here. I've done that. I messed up. I'm just like you. I'm no better than you, but it's simply the grace of God. See, we're not trying to trick anybody. We're not trying to fool you. Okay. And, and let me say this, the gospel is a logical undertaking. It's logical. It makes sense. We're not trying to fool you. We're not trying to make you feel a certain kind of way so you can make a certain kind of decision. No, we want you to know it makes logical sense to receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, say amen out here. It's just a smart thing to do. It's intelligent. Christians are intelligent. We're not making things based on feelings and emotions all day. Now, are there feelings involved? Of course, there's feelings involved in every decision that we make. There's feelings involved in everything that we do. Anybody who says you don't have feelings is a liar and the truth is not in them. But what I'm saying is we don't base our decisions and our commitments on emotion, but we base them on logic, on reasoning, on understanding, on our social connections, on our relationships that we are building in this particular a ministry that we are talking about. We are building a relationship between people and God. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get people to know that you can truly have a relationship with God. That's what PTPOG is all about. We're trying to get people to understand, hallelujah, that you, amen, can know God for yourself. You don't need a pastor to know God. Now, a pastor helps you can lead you and guide you, but you don't need a pastor to know God. You can know God by yourself. Somebody say amen directly. Come on, say amen out here today. You can pray for yourself. You can reach out to God for yourself. You can have a one-on-one -on -one with God yourself. Come on, say amen. And so this is all that Paul is trying to say. We're not coming at you with pretty little stories and cute little quotes here and, you know, and nice little soliloquies and pretty uh, painted analogies to get you to be convinced that this is something you ought to do. We're not, no, we're not even trying to convince you. We're just trying to give you an understanding of who God is and who we are. Notice what he says here. Notice what he says here in 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 2. He says, but by manifestation of the truth, we commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Notice, notice, he says, we ourselves are the ministry. He says, we commend ourselves, our lives to people. We open up, that's what he's saying. We open up, we double stamp, rubber stamp our own life. We want people to see us for who we are in Christ. 
We want people to see who we used to be and who we are now. We want people to know how God transformed us and changed us. Our lives are commended to people and therefore they can see how God uses his power to transform people's lives. When they look at me, when they see you, when they see how God has blessed you, when they see how you're walking with God, even though things aren't going perfect in your life, but you're not losing your hair, you're not pulling your hair out, you're not losing your mind, but you're continuing to serve God. You're continuing to bless the Lord at all times. You're continuing to seek the Lord, amen. You're continuing to have the joy of the Lord that is your strength. You're not rich, you're not famous, you're not the most uh, prettiest or greatest or the best, but it doesn't matter because you have God in your life. And your life is commendable to people. And people can see the ministry of God operating in your life. That's, that's, that's the ministry approach that God wants us to have. We're not trying to pull the wool over your eyes. We're not trying to cover the shade over the things that are most important. No, we're, we're opening up to you. We're, trans, we're, we're transparent with who we are. God desires to save you. And we are here to help facilitate that relationship. Simple as that. God wants to have a relationship with you. That's what we're here to do. We're not trying to be cute. We're not trying to hide it. Come on, say amen. We're straight up. I should have called this straight up, straight up approach to ministry because that's what Paul is saying. You know, we're being straight up. That's how we ought to be on a daily basis with people. You don't have to hide. You're not trying to trick anybody to come to your church. Just straight up tell them, listen, man, my church is, is full of, of the peace of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God. Let me show you something in the word of God that will bless you. Be, be forward. And listen, let me say this as I close this today. I said I wasn't going to take long, but you know how it goes. Today, people are looking for bold believers. They're looking for bold believers. They're looking for people who actually are willing to open their mouth and say who and what they believe in. See, who's actually got the courage to stand up to the courage of their convictions? Because so many Christians are quiet and simple mouthed and don't say anything and, and closed mouthed and, 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 you know, they just expect people to just figure it out. No, who's going to be willing to say, listen, you need to seek the Lord in your life. Who's willing to take that chance? Well, they might not be my friend anymore. Well, you know what? I'd rather them decide not to be my friend anymore than to so-called have a friend and never tell them about the good news of Christ and watch them die a sinner's death. Come on, say amen out here. I'd rather give you the straight up truth and watch you get upset with me and say, I can't believe you talking to me like this. Hey, you know what? I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that, you that I'm better than you. I'm just letting you know what the truth is. The truth is we're all sinners. And we're all going to hell unless we have a relationship with the God of heaven and earth, the God who created the sea and the world and the, everything that's in him, unless we have a relationship with God. We all are lost and of all men most miserable. So in our approach to ministry, in our approach to people, in ministering to them, we are not trying to hide anything. We're not using the shameful practices of the, you know, uh, manipulators and the magicians of our age. We're, we're not doing that. We're not using the psychological tactics. We, we, we don't need to do that. Because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword and is able to penetrate to the bone and the marrow, to the dividing of the bone and marrow. The word of God can penetrate to any heart. 
We don't, we don't have to create all this stuff. We don't have to make up all this psychological babble to try to get into people's head. We don't have to do that foolishness because the word of God has a way of cutting through the mess. And especially today, people need the word today. Can you say amen? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Lord, we need you in a special way today to give us the unction of the function to be able to minister to people, Lord, in a direct way, in a transparent way, in a truthful way, Lord, that is not in any way shameful or hidden or in any way clandestine. We're, we're not trying to do anything, Lord, that's hidden and causing people to feel uneasy about what we're seeking to do. But Lord, help us to approach people in ministry with the truth of the word of God, with the truth of our lives. And may, Lord, may you commend our lives to people. They, may they, they see Jesus Christ in us. Bless, Lord, your people today. Be with everyone under the sound of my voice and give us light and life, Lord, as we need, truthfully, your word in our hearts on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Listen, thank you so much for being with us. I really appreciate you hanging in for so long without me being online. It's been a little while. I know, but praise God, we're back. Listen, take care. God bless you. If you like this, please like this on, our, on your Facebook page. And if you would, please share this and subscribe to our Facebook group. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, please like this video. Please click the notification bell so you'll know when we get new videos. And please, if you would, consider subscribing to our uh, YouTube channel. We really, really need your help. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Please keep in prayer uh, this family that lost their, their young son today. If you would, just send a prayer up. Uh, I think the uh, funeral is at one o'clock today, our time. So please just send up a prayer right around that time that we should be able to minister uh, to uh, the people of God, that they might know that God still loves them and that he still cares. Amen. God be with you. Love you with the love of the Lord, guys. See you on tomorrow. Take care. Blessings.